Check one, check one. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I'd like to start out with an apology and then a couple of thank you shout outs just to everybody. The apologies to everybody here. Um, I was really, really trying to get him done. I just, I had, I was basically had both of the printers at our makerspace running 24 hours a day for two days. I got all the parts printed, but getting them together, it just, I couldn't get them up to the, to the level of quality I wanted, so I just decided to not bring it. And so I apologize that I couldn't have them actually running around and harassing you in person. Uh, I do have to give a huge uh, shout out to the Dallas Makerspace. It's where I did all my printing. I got a lot of support from everybody as I was doing it. They let me ignore them as we were moving last weekend to the new site while I was printing everything. And also to the actual, you can see it on there, uh, the poly printer guys. They're local guys that make the printer that I was printing off of. They've given me a hell of a lot of support. Uh, I couldn't have done, gotten as far as I have without them. And it's a rock solid printer. We've had one at, the, at our space, we have two of them. And the amount of abuse these things get is amazing and they still work. Uh, really good build volume, really good size. If you're looking into buying one and you have, have the dough, I would really recommend you looking at these guys, the poly printers. Okay, uh, and I'll go ahead and start this. Um, quarter scale Tachikoma. Uh, is anybody here from my panel that I did two years ago? Just a couple. All right. Two years ago, I had a smaller scale version. He was probably finished only about uh, maybe six scale. Uh, and that was just a laser cut uh, masonite skeleton, no outside finishing. Uh, and he was rolling around. Um, and I'd always wanted to get to this point, but I wanted to get a rolling chassis working. Well, I got there, now I decided to upgrade. Uh, and this is pretty much what I've been going for, and I'm getting there, uh, just the level of quality is kicking me in the butt because I'm getting really OCD on stuff. But everything you see, uh, for the most part, externally is 3D printed, uh, except for this, which is PVC pipe, and this one ring around here, which is uh, masonite. But otherwise, everything is 3D printed. This top dome, I'll go through it. This is four parts. The eyes each are two parts. This leg, which was printed on the, their uh, prototype double wide printer, is two parts. It's a front and front side and back side. And everything's glued together. Then loads of Bondo, loads of sanding, loads of primer, loads of sanding, and sanding, and sanding, and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of sanding. And wet sanding. And a thousand grit color wet sanding. So. Uh, bu -bu -bu. So 3D printing, um, basic form, everything was modeled up in LightWave. Uh, when I get this sucker all done, I am probably just going to throw everything up, the STL files and the LightWave files up on Shapeways. So if you're crazy enough to want to go and try and do this, because when this is all done, I have 100 hours just in printing time and probably about 4 kilos of ABS plastic. So that's just for the plastic at current rates, that's about... 140 bucks worth of plastic. So uh, I'm learning stuff as I go along. I can point out some tidbits. I'll probably change the files, or I might not change files, but I'll throw it. So you might want to change this because hey, it actually worked better this way or another way. Um, OK, first is just me. This is an in middle print of one of the very first parts I uh, printed. Obviously, it's the very front section of the Tachikoma uh, in mid print. That's the finalized print. The funny thing on these parts is you have the part you're keeping, and then because this thing is pretty much hollow, you have the back side. See all that stuff in the back there? That all gets thrown out, that support material. This part weighed in total about 220 grams worth of plastic. The part I kept was about 85 grams. The other oh, 100 plus grams is all the support material which just gets thrown out. This is the reason why you want to buy cheap filament, but quality filament, because you're going to be chucking some of it, or you need to change how you're designing your print. The reason I did it this way is, it's just like layers on a tree, you have filament layers that build up, and depending upon your orientation, the layers can get very uh, tree barky, or they can be very thin, and with this orientation, there was a lot less cleanup involved. This is just the start of the Bondo sanding dance ad nauseum. Uh, I did a lot of wet sanding on this. With ABS plastic, everything's printed with ABS. Uh, I know you can do PLA, but I, we just don't use PLA at the makerspace. Uh, I have no idea how it reacts to Bondo. ABS doesn't even work. So you can use Bondo or any similar uh, body filler. It works just fine. This is a close-up. 
this is past the Bondo stage. This has a couple layers of uh, filler primer layered on. There's regular primer and there's filler primer. Filler primer uh, has a lot more bulk to it. It can fill up uh, deeper gaps. Uh, it also tends to uh, stand very nicely. Uh, I've worked with a couple of different uh, brands. Uh, this is, I've been using almost exclusively Duplicolor stuff uh, for auto body. It's ex more expensive. It's like seven, eight bucks a can compared to the Rust-Oleum filler primer, which you can get at uh, Home Depot, which is like 350. There's a reason it costs twice as much. It sands a lot nicer. Uh, when you're wet sanding, it doesn't come up, the, the Duplicolor sands nicer. It doesn't gum up your uh, sandpaper. Uh, I think it actually dries faster, so it can, you can get moving quicker. Um, but I tried to stay with Duplicolor for everything because that way I don't have reactions between this brand has different solvents and that brand. And when you're doing that, sometimes you can get nasty interactions and you'll get bubbling or wrinkling or crackling in your finishes.